Whoa, what is this? What is this? It's this is day one. Day one of what do I do to ski better? What are we what's today is we're in the backyard. We're in the backyard. I'm thinking. Hmm. I'm thinking it's single leg day, but not like ply or well, I'll get started with lunges first, and I have no plan. I don't know what it'll turn into. So, start with lunges, probably a good length of them, a good bit of them. And then we'll kind of flow from there. And boom, and all one. That's pretty good. I'm trying to get a upper hamstring stretch and a hip hip flexor stretch. And I like putting my my chin wrapping my chin around my wrapping my chin around my knee. And that works pretty good. That's okay. I mean that's pretty good and actually next next thing I want to do here I have a pipe I used to have this background set up that was all the stuff I was using for it and I just I don't know I never got around to finishing up building it it was I got to got it to an operational point but never ever really got it to like sturdy enough to practice on and it was always sketchy. I, I always, I still regret never really taking the time to build a sturdy background, backyard setup. But uh, here's the pipe. Pipes on the ground. And the goal with this, I'm probably gonna chop my head off, but that's okay. You'll get the point. The goal with this is um, anything I want it to be. Put the phone away here. Goal can be anything I want it to be, but but control control is the number one thing above all. The overlying practice. I love the. It hurts a little bit under my feet. It hurts. It's like my feet are all tender. And I like just the idea that I'm putting a little bit of stress on the bottom of my feet and maybe building up those arch muscles. But it rolls. It's all messy. I don't know. I like it closer to the camera. And um, focus for this off season is focus for this off season is uh, unnatural. I have never spun unnatural, but I'm pretty confident I'll be able to do, bring up my skiing to symmetrical four-way this season, just in the first half, just because I'm, I'm really only have mastered straight fives. It's not like there's a whole a lot that needs to be done. It's a lot easier working at the second way, the second, third and fourth way is easier than the first. My first few left threes and fives are not going to feel as good as my right fives are now until we get that same number up in there so it'll never be the same but at one point my left threes and fives will be the same as my right threes and fives are now uh it's just a matter of starting you gotta if you're not starting you're you're gonna get lost but uh here we'll do it this way get a little four aft analysis this is uh, so I'm using this to pop over so I know that I'm actually moving across the ground I, like, I can start a little farther back and I like to, oh, my toes are good I like, I 
not jumping from my toes. And landing on them is hard, but just the in, having that intent is good. Let's start with some 180s. And I don't like to do this. I prefer, because in skiing, your, your feet are sliding. You're sliding your feet under your body. So to actually like land and go like this is not how you're gonna be skiing. You're gonna be landing and then kind of shoving your feet back under you with the sliding of the skis. So that's pretty, like that, that's pretty realistic. I can do that on skis pretty well. And then left side. So left is unnatural. I am also left-handed and left-footed. But the... So one of these is almost the same, but there's a bit of tilting of the head. I always have to be very careful to not overdo that. It happened again there, but it's better. Still on my toes, nice and light. Now let's go for right three. So... Pretty good. Pretty good. Maybe a little switch. Right. Pretty good. Uh, so that's the warm up. I'll probably do a couple more of those uh, between takes. I'm, I feel like I'm comfortable enough to start learning something new. And, and, or maybe test my balance. Or, or certify, right? So that, like I can. So I can left three better than it was a month ago. And so now how do I know that I'm really have an ownership of that? It's to add something. So I can add a creative choice or I can add a defensive maneuver. So a defensive maneuver would actually just step back in technique uh, with intent of doing it better. So, so like if I'm good doing it you know, from my toes, cool and I want to make it easier I'm being defensive at that point then you know I'll go from a flat foot another defensive tactic is maybe wind up more or less if you tend to over rotate and so that's pretty good and then a creative choice would make it harder so it's an offensive tactic uh, and one that's really good is one foot and I cannot do this but I can at least get started. Really important to always just start somewhere. So that's probably certifying that I'm not awful at this. It's at least giving me the certainty that I have a bit of a margin. I'll do a couple. That's pretty good. It feels weird. We want it to feel weird. That's how we know something's up. And now let's do it with the other foot. Okay, so that's a little bit harder. Maybe I have some core strength differences that I'm just learning about now, right? That's interesting. So that's a little bit, you know, just playing with it. That's pretty good. I'm happy. So is it the same as the right side, my natural? Oh, so super careful there. I did almost hurt myself. No tweaks or anything, just kind of sketchy. That's pretty good. I felt actually on that last try, I felt a little too comfortable and that, that ended up making me too relaxed. And so when something went slightly wrong, I kind of leaned into it, let it happen. But there was no correction being made. So I kind of just kept screwing up even more but that's pretty good you know that's pretty steady that I'm, I'm happy to be more symmetrical on grass on firm grind things like that and it's opening up a lot more tricks right if I can do four-way threes just I can I can say I, I can do a 360 but really I can do four tricks and that's not even counting like leading safety or trailing like leading grab, uh, trailing grab, like you're, these are multipliers, you, right? So this little bit seems like all oh, like, it's gonna feel like you're basically just re, 
repeating learning steps to basically look the same. But at the end of the day, if you're doing more tricks, you're gonna be less bored in the park. And that's kind of the goal, is to have more fun being less bored. So I think it's, it's even if you're not competing, it's a good strategy to start thinking about spinning more tricks, even if it's your unnatural. And, and if you wanna focus on style, you're gonna figure out that you have strengths in your right rotation that you don't necessarily have in your deep-rooted, natural, um, done it the same way a thousand times direction. Well, I warmed up pretty good, more than a little bit. And so I wanna do some sprints. I've had runner's knee the last few months uh, that I, I think I fixed in a gym. Uh, I, I needed some, whatever you call this, uh, abduction, no, adduction, adduction. I don't know, I was doing both. Adductors and adductors. That fixed my meniscus strain. And let's see if we're back where we started or if we're back at a kind of a new standard. It's, it's so, here we go. Where did he go? So I think I'll do the knee kicks. Do the knee kick things. Maybe some like actual like nutcracker kicks and then we'll do the I'll try to sprint as fast as possible with my just one leg as if I was basically an amputee or something okay here we go It doesn't have to be long or intense. It can just be your off-season training. It can just be a flow. Like, how, what is a movement you want to do? How long do you want to be doing it? How much energy do you want to use on this kind of flow? And then see where your body and your feelings take you. You're, by starting the little flow workout, whatever. Workout, it's a workout, it's training. Be honest with yourself, you're working hard. Don't downgrade it. Don't say, oh, I'm I'm just moving. Like, da da. Don't like give yourself as much credit as you need to keep yourself motivated. And uh, yeah, it's as simple as that. Just like, well, if it's like if you have a couple, if there's an exercise you don't like, fucking give that body part more rest. You don't need to, you don't need to run it into the ground. I can do something else. If, you're, if your knees hurt, do some core. That's what I do. I love core. I've already understood the impacts on confidence that a uh, strong core can have. And so I feel like it's really motivating to get a good core workout in. If I'm ever injured or anything, like if some part of me is worn out and I can't stick to the program exactly, I'll throw some core in there. And that'll keep me feeling like well, yeah, but this, you know, this body part's healing or whatever, but at least, at least I have my central power generator is still in tip-top shape, and that's pretty important. So a couple more single leg sprints, and then we're off to basically like being on vacation for the day. <laughs> At a trampoline place next to a foam pit, you, there's one thing you can do that's really good is count your reps by building any kind of thing with the foam blocks out of the foam pit. Just start like, so like a three by three by three is 27 reps. Layers, just like every time I land something kind of remotely the way I want to, I'll put a block down, but I'll go in the foam pit and I'll pick out blocks of different qualities. So. It's just a nice, neat square will be a good rep. So if I'm, I'm just stick it, like that's a nice cube. And if I don't, if, like if I landed, but I, my head wasn't where, where I wanted to be, or I got kind of lost for a second and I had to find my way back, uh, then I'll put in a, um, 
shitty block, like one that's just been years old, dirty, like pretty much round. And then if I have enough shitty reps, uh, my foundation in my building blocks will be disgusting. And wh whenever I start, like, say I get 20 set, like a three by three by three structure of cubes. So that's 27 reps that are landed. If half of them are shit and I go to the next trick that I, I would stack on top of that three by three by three, I would have all these nice blocks sitting on top of shitty blocks. And it gives me a really good idea uh, as a coach of it's, it's as a coach, I'm always trying to visualize things in a playful and interesting way. And so this is definitely a success, I think, a recent success in kind of that finding new ways to approach that perspective. The program that works for you is the program you'll actually stick to. Then if you're actually getting some satisfaction and motivation from every workout that's linking together, you can, you can look into ways to make that time to get more out of the time you're already allocating. And even in over optimization can also be because if you're nerding out 150% every on every detail, even if it's a program you've been doing consistently, it might just start to suck. So you got to be really careful when you're optimizing. You see a lot of people, they don't give a shit about optimizing. They just fine because they are doing a good enough job to keep themselves coming back the next day. And that's really what it comes down to in the end. If you're seeing it in real life or in your mind, you're visualizing. A lot of people think you gotta sit there, close your eyes, and just and try to like have the images in your mind like you'd be dreaming. That works for some people. Some people are actually, they can't generate images in their brain. And what they have to do is they have to watch first person GoPro footage. So uh, there's there's a one or two Harlow videos. There's a lot of Jesper Chatter videos. There's uh, like flat three, double backflip, backflip. Uh, you're gonna be looking at Candy Tovex, like one of those days and stuff like that. Uh, basically any first person footage you can find. If um, another one is the trampoline, yeah, the trampoline. So, if, even if you're not doing, say, the flat three on the trampoline and landing it, you can do the flat three set and just focus on making your eyes see what they would see if you were doing the full thing. So you're you're landing on your back at, at like with a ninety degree rotation with your legs up, or I don't know what you call that, just the flat three set, landing on your back, just keep focusing on what your eyes would see in the second half. It doesn't matter if there's a bounce in there. You're gonna, you're gonna look up, you're gonna see your hips and your, and your, um, you're gonna see your hips and your feet in front of you, you're gonna tuck, you're gonna look up and behind, and boom, that's, you basically just g generated a memory of what it looks like to do a flat three, and you just have to don't even, don't even hang on to what that would look like if you were to dream it later or generate that image. Just, just remember what it felt like. Basically, just remember what it felt like. So I think that's how you should visualize. Uh, for when you're stretching, you can visualize grabs really easily. And here you just remember how it feels, right? The, my spine, like, say I want to tweak a safety like Henry Carlo and he doesn't stick his feet together too much if like there's some iconic, he's like this, right? There's a few iconic clips, some Henrik Harlow, some someone else, where they're, they'll be doing like, I don't know, a court or a rodeo five, and they'll try to look at the base of their ski. So what do you do to visualize that? What do you do to practice that? Oh, I don't know, how about sit down and try to look at the bottom of your foot and that should probably be good enough, right? That's a start. It's a start. Is it? Are you gonna actually be able to like flex your foot this much inside your ski boot and like get a, such a good grip that you're like actually contorting yourself like crazy? Maybe. Probably not. But 
give yourself the option, give yourself the option. But for stretches, this, I spend a lot of time like this, actually between sets. I don't do this like, okay, hamstring stretch. If I'm trying to think of something or watching a, sec a segment that I really like or something, I'll just sit like this. Uh, but most of the time, start with this. I start with this with an emphasis on the kind of the top of the leg that's behind me like this. And um, an emphasis on the knee, the part of the knee that's touching the ground. I'll, I'll even grab, kind of do this, just to get an idea. And I'm hot at the hot tub right now, so it's actually moving really good. Pretty happy. And I can kind of map out some problem, potential problem areas I'll have when I'm skiing. So for example, I had a runner's knee right here, left leg outside meniscus. And I, in this stretch, there's a bit of a tweak in there. So that's really good to know. It's really good to just be aware of that. And I'm not gonna work it like crazy. I'm just gonna you know, map it out, spend the time I need to spend in there to kind of feel it out. And I want all my stretches to involve core stretching and back stretching. So, so instead of just sitting like this, you know, I'll stick a hand up and then, I don't know, like push on stuff, see where it feels, build awareness of what tweaks and what bends that fairly. And that's all there is to it. Just really just going with exactly what my body needs. Not, no sort of program or anything, just where do I feel what, what am I gonna do about it, trial and error. Basically just boom, boom, boom. Where do I feel it? What do I do? Trial and error. Boom, boom, boom. All the time. 